PE. Content carried in here is suitable for general family viewing. Okay, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're watching from. This is KUTV Elimu Live, the Kenya's premier educational television. Welcome, and my name is Martha Majun. I'm a teacher of English and Literature at Odianya Secondary School in Kisumu County. Thank you for tuning in. In our English lesson today, uh, we'll be learning about ambiguity in sentences. Ambiguity in sentences is tested in English paper 101 stroke 2, that is English paper 2, and uh, it's tested under grammar. So um, our specific ob objectives of this lesson is that by the end of the lesson, the learner should be able to, one, define the term ambiguity, two, explain ambiguity in given sentences, and three, attempt the exercise given. So first of all, let's look at uh, the definition of the term uh, ambiguity. Um, ambiguity is a state in, uh, it's a state in which a statement has more than one meaning, that is uh, having two or more interpretations. So when you speak about uh, ambiguity, maybe you've come across um, a situation whereby someone tells you something, maybe uh, you've had a statement from someone but you don't understand whether they mean maybe one, uh, the meaning can be different. So you don't understand whatever they mean uh, as per what they are saying. So that is basically what ambiguity refers to, or rather what ambiguity is. So uh, this means that the statement is unclear, confusing, and can be understood in two or more ways. So basically that is what ambiguity refers to. So I want us to look at uh, the causes of ambiguity in sentences. What causes ambiguity in sentences? So the first thing that makes the sentence to be ambiguous is punctuation marks like a comma. So when we have uh, what we are first supposed to focus on, uh, just to make sure that we are clear and we don't bring confusion without uh, confusion during a conversation or in a piece of writing, we are supposed to focus on uh, punctuation marks. We make sure that the punctuation marks that we are, uh, when, for instance, when during speech, we must make sure that our speech has the right punctuation. And uh, in a piece of writing, we should also make sure that we have the right punctuation marks as in our piece of writing. So you must focus on a punctuation, punctuation marks, especially a comma, to make sure that the idea that you want to pass across will not make someone be confused or have divided opinions or ideas as far as per what we say or what we have written. Okay, the second thing that brings uh, ambiguity in sentences is personal pronouns. So we have different types of pronouns, and specifically personal pronouns like she, her, he, or him can bring about ambiguity in sentences. So when we speak, we should be, um, we should focus on the personal pronouns. Just like, for instance, if you want to say, if you want to, uh, if you want to refer to someone or something using a personal pronoun, you have to make sure that it is more specific and more clear so as not to bring about a, a confusion in a sentence. Then the third thing that brings about ambiguity in sentences is the structure of the sentence, the sentence structure. 
sentence structure, how you structure your sentence can also bring about ambiguity in uh, sentences. So sh we should also make sure that we construct our sentences well so that we uh, so, so that whoever is listening to us, maybe the audience, it can be one person or many, they are not somehow confused by what we are saying. So I want us to look at ambiguity in sentences. Let us now look at ambiguity in sentences. Ambiguity in sentences. So what are some of the sentences that are somehow confusing uh, that we have to give the two possible meanings? So when we look at ambiguity in sentences, when we look at a, a sentence, for instance, Juma likes reading. More than Pamela. So Juma likes reading more than Pamela. We have, uh, this is our first sentence, Juma likes reading more than Pamela. So in this sentence, this sentence is ambiguous. There are two possible meanings that will come from the sentence, Juma likes reading more than Pamela. So when someone says that Juma likes reading more than Pamela, I want you to engage your brains and then you uh, engage your brains and maybe get the two meanings of uh, that statement. So Juma likes reading more than Pamela. So what are the two meanings from this sentence? The first meaning is that Juma prefers Pamela to reading. So the first one, Juma prefers Pamela to reading. And uh, the second meaning, Juma likes the habit of reading more than Pamela. Likes the habit of reading more than Pamela. So I want us to first of all look at the first meaning, Juma prefers Pamela to reading. So let's get back to our, our, our statement, our ambiguous sentence, which is Juma likes reading more than Pamela. So Juma likes reading more than Pamela. Let's look at the first answer. Juma prefers reading to, uh, prefers Pamela to, I think it's prefers reading to, Pamela. Yeah, Juma prefers reading to Pamela. Reading to Pamela. Juma likes reading more than Pamela. Juma prefers reading to Pamela. So here we have one person, and that person is Juma. So if you look at Juma, Juma likes reading more than Pamela. So we have one person, Juma. And this one person has two options. The first option is reading, and the second option is Pamela. The second thing is Pamela. So of the two, we have one person, Juma, and we have the action reading, and we have another person here who is the object now, Pamela. So Juma likes reading more than Pamela. The first meaning, it means that we only have one person here, and that person is Juma. And when it comes to between reading and Pamela, Juma prefers reading uh, to Pamela. Then when you come to the second statement or the second meaning of the statement, Juma likes reading more than Pamela. So the second meaning is that Juma likes the habit of reading more than Pamela. So in this case, I want you to look at um, this sentence as if we have two people. So in the first statement, we only have one person distinguishing between reading and um, their preference as far as reading and Pamela is concerned. But in the second statement, we have two people here. We have Juma and then we have Pamela. So these are two different people. And of the two, it is Juma who likes the habit of reading more than Pamela. So Juma likes the habit. The, 
For you to remove uh, ambiguity in these two sentences, you have to give out uh, the two meaning of sentences perfectly so that whoever is getting the, uh, the sentence will not be confused. So Juma prefers reading to Pamela. That one is uh, clear. And then in the second statement, Juma likes the habit. So whatever is going to bring out the difference in uh, these two meaning is that in the second one, we have one person uh, liking two things but likes one more than the other. And in the second one, we have two people, but one of them likes the habit of reading more than the other. And so in this case, it is Juma who likes the habit of reading more than Pamela. <coughs> I believe that one is clear. And uh, I repeat, you are watching KUTV Elimu Live, the Kenya's premier educational TV. So welcome to our second uh, our second sentence. So the second sentence, visiting friends can be annoying. So this is our second statement. Visiting friends can be can be annoying. So what are the two possible meanings of this statement? So the two possible meanings of this statement, I want us to look at uh, the sentence structure. Visiting friends can be annoying. So the first meaning of this sentence is that friends who visit can be a bother. Yes. Fri visiting friends can be annoying. So friends who visit can be a bother. Then uh, the second uh, statement is going to friends places. Going to friends places can be a nuisance. Going to friends places can be a nuisance. So these are the two possible meanings of the statement, visiting friends can be annoying. So let, let us first look at uh, the first meaning of uh, visiting friends can be annoying. So here, let's look at visiting friends as the subject of this uh, sentence. So we have visiting friends here as the subject of the sentence. So visiting friends are the friends who visit and so in this case this becomes the subject of the sentence and the meaning of the first the, the first meaning of the statement will be friends who visit can be a bother and the second meaning is so when we remove this and then we say going uh, visiting friends can be annoying going to friends places can be an and so in the second statement now we are not going to take visiting friends as a, a subject in this sentence, but rather the action of moving from one place to another. That is moving from your place and you go to your friend's place. So going to friend's places, uh, going to friend's places can be a bother. So that is the second meaning of that uh, statement. Okay, let's look at the third statement. John likes playing more than Maria. So this uh, John likes playing more than Maria is somehow uh, the same to the first the first statement which was uh, Juma likes reading more than Pamela. So there's no much difference. So we have John likes playing more than Maria. So the first meaning both John and Maria likes playing but John plays more. So in this case you have two people. In this statement John likes playing more than Maria. I want you to look at that statement as if we have two people. So we have the first person, John, and the second person, Maria. So both of them like playing. But of the two, it is John who uh, plays more. And the second meaning, 
we have one person who is John, and John has uh, made, okay, we have two, we have one person who is John, and we have two things here. We have playing and we have Maria. So between playing and Maria, John likes playing more than he likes Maria. So that is uh, our third sentence. Okay, our fourth sentence. The tourist saw the monkey with a telescope. The tourist saw the monkey with a telescope. So the, what is the two possible meanings of uh, this statement, the tourist saw the monkey with a telescope. So here we have the tourist, and then we have a telescope, and then we have a monkey. We have the tourist, we have the monkey, and then we have the telescope. So the first meaning of this, uh, the first meaning of this statement is that using a telescope. Now there's a gadget known as a telescope. So using that, uh, using a telescope, a tourist saw the monkey. So the tourist was using the telescope and in that in that act the tourist saw the monkey so that is the first meaning of that sentence that uh, the tourist was using a telescope and uh, the tourist saw the monkey the second meaning of the sentence the tourist saw the monkey with a telescope is that in this case now remember in our first insta instance it's the tourist who had a telescope and he used the telescope to see the monkey. So in our second sentence now, we have the tourist, and then we have the monkey who has the telescope. So in this case, it's not the tourist who has the telescope, but the monkey. So the tourist saw a monkey which had a telescope. The tourist saw a monkey which had a telescope. In this case, it's the monkey now that has the telescope and not the tourist. So I want us to go back to the sentence and then see if the if you can get the if you can if we've removed ambiguity, if we say the first and the second statement as far as that statement is concerned. So the tourist saw the monkey with a telescope. So here we have using a telescope, the tourist saw the monkey. And then in the second statement, the tourist saw a monkey which had the telescope. So in this case, it's the monkey that had the telescope. So on to our next, uh, on to our next sentence. They gave her horse feathers. They gave her horse feathers. They gave her horse feathers. This is also an ambiguous sentence. And so we are supposed to remove ambiguity, or rather, give the different meanings of the term, uh, give the different meaning of the sentence. So they gave the horse, they gave her horse feathers. So here we have the feathers, and then we have the horse. So there is the subject here, and then we have the horse, and we have the feathers. So the first meaning of that, uh, the first meaning of that statement is that the feathers were given to her horse. So there's, a, there's someone who owns the horse, and so the feathers are being given to that specific horse. They gave her horse feathers. The first meaning is that the feathers were given to her horse. So if you say the feathers were given to her horse, you can see that the sentence is clear and does not bring any confusion to whoever is listening or whoever is reading. They gave her horse feathers, meaning that the feathers were given to her horse. She owns the horse, and so those horses, uh, uh, the horse is the one that was given the feathers. The second uh, sentence, or the second meaning of that statement, they gave her horse feathers, is that she was given horse feathers. So the second meaning of that statement is that we have a type of feathers, type of feathers known as horse feathers, maybe from the horse. So this, the subject now, who was the object in the statement they gave her horse feathers, now the her 
comes in to be the subject and so this per this person the her who is now the subject and now we'll talk of she as the personal pronouns is the one that was given the horse feathers so she was given horse feathers in this case horse feathers referring to the type of or a type of feathers so the sentence now is clear if you say they give her horse feathers that one is an ambiguous sentence but if you say that the feathers were given to the horse it's so clear that the horse is the one that is given the feathers and then if you say she was given horse feathers now she is the one who is being given the horse feathers which is a type of feathers so once more welcome to uh once more tune in keep on watching KUTV Elimu Live the Kenya's premier educational television so this is an uh, a very examinable question tested in paper 2 uh, this is this is a very common question tested in english paper 2 questions so extract from the past kcse uh past kcse questions we have uh, in 2017 ambiguity was tested and remember there are different ways in which uh, this question can be tested the first way is that the examiner can ask you to explain the two different meanings in a sentence and the second way you can be asked to remove ambiguity in a sentence so you have to know the meaning of the term ambiguity that is why in our introduction under the specific objectives we said that by the end of the lesson the learner should be able to define the term ambiguity so all the all the learners from all over the nation from national school extra county schools county schools and uh, sub county schools you have to understand the term ambiguity so that when the examiner asks you to remove ambiguity in a sentence you know that that is a confusing sentence or confusing statement and thereby you have to give two different sentences that are clear and won't confuse uh, won't be confusing yes so in 2017 we had a question under ambiguity and the question was uh, explain the two different meanings in the following sentence so there's a sentence and the sentence is kamau hates visiting relatives kamau hates visiting relatives so if you read this sentence as kamaru not kamau if you read this if you read this sentence as kamaru hates visiting relatives and then if you read it as kamau hates visiting relatives so you can see the sentence is the same but how you read the sentence or rather the sentence structure is what brings about the different in meanings in this sentence so kamaru hates visiting relatives so the first uh, the first answer was supposed to be kamaru does not like going to visit relatives kamaru does not like does not like going to visit going to visit relatives so here we have the subject kamaru the sentence is kamaru hates visiting relatives so we have the subject kamaru and kamaru does not like going to visit relatives kamaru does not like going to visit relatives so if i can explain further for you to remove ambiguity in this sentence we have to look at the word hates which is the action or rather the verb in this statement so kamaru hates visiting relatives hates is the verb in this sentence so if you look at this verb hates if you repeat the same as kamaru hates visiting relatives the ambiguity will still be 
there. But if you say, if you replace the, uh, if you replace the uh, verb with another word, uh, then with another word or another or other words, then the sentence is now going to be clear. So let us look at the first answer. The first answer was, Kamaru does not like going to visit relatives. So Kamaru is the subject here, and he doesn't like the act of leaving his house and going to visit relatives. So Kamaru does not like going to visit relatives. The sentence is so clear, and so it is not ambiguous. Then the second answer was supposed to be, or rather is, Kamaru does not like relatives who visit. Kamaru does not like, does not like relatives who visit. So here we have this person, Kamaru, who has a house or a home, but he doesn't like his relatives to visit him. So we have Kamaru who has a house or a home, but does not like relatives who visit. So maybe Kamaru is an introvert in some case, or maybe he just doesn't like relatives visiting him. So to remove ambiguity in that sentence, the KC, uh, KCSE 2017, there's a, there was a question whereby the, uh, the candidates were asked to explain the two different meanings in the following sentence. And the sentence was, Kamaru hates visiting relatives. So in this sentence, like I've said, in the first answer, we focus on that person, Kamaru, who is the subject in this sentence. So Kamaru does not like leaving his house and going to uh, visit relatives. And the second meaning is that Kamaru does not like relatives who, goes, who go to his home to visit him. So that is the second meaning. So for you to give the two possible meanings of the sentence, you have to understand the sentence and give the two possible meaning that comes from uh, the sentence. Uh, <clears throat> okay, in 2019, there was also uh, questions on ambiguity. So in 2019, the first question was rewrite, okay, the question was rewrite the following to remove ambiguity. Rewrite the following to remove ambiguity. Juma told Ali that he lacked self-confidence. Juma told Ali that he lacked self-confidence. Juma told Ali that he lacked self-confidence. So this was the first question uh, under ambiguity in 2019. Juma told Ali that he lacked self-confidence. So we have two people here. We have Juma and we have Ali. So two people are maybe conversing, but in this case, it is one person who is talking, and the person is saying, okay, the sentence is, Juma told Ali that he lacked self-confidence. So we have two people here. We have Juma, and then we have Ali. So Ali, Juma says, Juma told Ali that he lacked self-confidence. So I want us to, write, to rewrite this in uh, direct speech so as to get the two possible meanings of the sentence. And remember the rules, in, uh, the rules that are applied when you're writing the direct speech and the indirect speech as well. So we have different rules when we're writing direct speech and indirect speech. So in this case, I want us to look at direct speech so as to get the two different meaning of the statement Juma told Ali that he lacked self-confidence. So if you write this statement as Juma told Ali that he lacked self-confidence. So we have one person, here, we have a person known as Juma who is telling Ali that Ali lacked self-confidence. Confidence. So Juma says, I'll just write you lack uh, self-confidence. 
So that I punctuate it well. So this is the statement, you lack self-confidence. This is a direct, uh, I want to now punctuate it to make it look like a direct speech. You lack self-confidence. So we open the speech marks just before you, and then we put a comma, and then we close. We put the closing speech mark. You lack self-confidence. So when you are writing a direct speech, once you open the speech marks, the first letter must start with a capital letter. So you must start with a capital letter because these are words that are coming from someone's mouth. You lack self-confidence. Juma told Ali. Juma told Ali. So this is a direct speech. Juma is talking to Ali and Juma is telling Ali you lack self-confidence. So you in this case refers to Ali. You refers to Ali. So Juma tells Ali that it is Ali who lacks self-confidence. So for you to remove ambiguity or make the sentence clear, this sentence clear, Juma told Ali that he lacks self-confidence, you can introduce uh, direct speech, you can introduce speech marks where and there, in this case, you say that uh, you write, you lack self-confidence, Juma told Ali. So in this case, you will be referring to Ali. In the second case, you can say, Juma told Ali. Juma told Ali. Again, we go back to the rules in uh, writing the direct speech. So Juma told Ali. Juma starts with a capital letter. The first one must start with a capital letter. That is obvious. Juma told Ali. So to separate the words of the speaker, from the tag, you have to use the comma. So Juma told Ali, comma, and then you open the speech marks, and then you write, I lack, I must also be capital, I like, I lack self-confidence. Juma told Ali, I like, uh, I lack self-confidence. So in the first, answer, like in our first answer, you lack self-confidence. It is Ali who lacks self-confidence and so Juma is telling him the same that he lacks the self-confidence. So you refers to uh, Juma. I mean refers to Ali. Then in the second statement, Juma told Ali. So Juma again is telling Ali but in this case, Juma is referring to himself. So Juma is referring to himself and then Juma says, I lack self-confidence. So let's go back to our question or uh, the statement in question. Juma told Ali that he lacked self-confidence. So we have the personal pronoun here, he, that brings about the ambiguity in this sentence. Juma told Ali that he lacked self-confidence. So he in this case can refer to Juma or Ali. So if you say Juma told Ali that he lacks self-confidence and he refers to Ali, then you'll say you lack self-confidence, Juma told Ali. But if you're referring to he as Juma, then the sentence will read, Juma told Ali I lack self-confidence. So Juma will referring back to himself and says that he lacks self-confidence. And so I lack self-confidence, Juma told Ali. So that is the, uh, the, pos the two possible meanings of that sentence. So in the same year, there was also another question uh, under ambiguity in sentences. And that question was, I saw a monkey with a telescope. I saw a monkey with a telescope. So the first meaning of this statement, I saw a monkey with a telescope. So we have I as the subject, and then we have monkey, and then we also have a telescope. So I am the one, and I'm seeing, I'm looking at the monkey. So I, as the subject of this sentence, is looking at the monkey 
and it is the monkey that has the telescope. So I saw a monkey which had a telescope. I'm looking at the monkey, and it's the monkey that has the telescope. Are you getting this? If you read the statement, I saw a monkey with a telescope, the sentence is somehow ambiguous. But if I say, I saw a monkey which had a telescope, the sentence is not ambiguous anymore. So here I'm looking at the monkey, and this monkey has a telescope. And that's why the first statement, for it to be clear, I'll say, I saw a monkey which had a telescope. The second meaning of this sentence now, I'm the one who has the telescope. I saw a monkey with a telescope. So I'm the one who has the telescope, and I'm using the telescope to see the monkey or look at the monkey. So to remove ambiguity in this sentence, the first sentence will be, I saw a monkey with, which had a telescope. So it's the monkey that has a telescope. Then the second meaning, I'm the one who is having the telescope. Then I'm using that telescope to look at the monkey. So using a telescope, I saw a monkey. Those two sentences are so clear and so it is not, the sentence is no longer ambiguous. Then um, the third uh, question in KCSE 2019, uh, look at uh, look at that cow with one eye. Let me write it. Look at that cow. Look at that cow with one eye. Look at that cow with one eye. So look at this uh, sentence. Look at that cow with one eye. Is the sentence ambiguous? Is the sentence ambiguous? Look at that cow with one eye. The sentence is somehow confusing. So if someone tells you, look at that cow with one eye, are you the one who is going to use the one eye to look at the cow, or is it the cow that has one eye? Look at the cow with one eye. So the first meaning of this statement is use one eye to look at that cow. Use one eye to look at that cow. So you can close one of your eyes, close one of your eyes, and then you look at the cow. So that is the one, that is one of the meanings of that uh, statement. That is the first meaning of that statement. Use one eye to look at the cow. So close one of your eyes, and then with the other one that is open, look at the cow. Then the second meaning, it is the cow that has one eye. So look at that one-eyed cow. So it's like someone tells you that you look at the cow that has one eye. So for you to remove ambiguity or rather to explain the two meanings of that statement, you will say that the first answer is use one eye to look at that cow. And the second answer, it is the cow that has and uh, it is, uh, okay, the second meaning is that you look at uh, the cow, and the cow is the one that has one eye. Those Again, to look at, uh, I want us to look at this sentence here. Let me write the sentence. 
The woman beat her daughter because she was drunk. The woman beat her daughter because she was drunk. The woman beat her daughter because she was drunk. The woman beat her daughter because she was drunk. So this sentence here is ambiguous and so we are supposed to remove ambiguity in sentences in this sentence. So to remove ambiguity in this sentence we're supposed to look at the sentence and give the two possible meanings of that sentence. Like I said the examiner can ask you this question in two different ways. If you find uh, somehow a lenient examiner the examiner will just tell you that you write the two possible meanings of uh, the sentence in question. But if you have, if you get another examiner, that examiner will ask you to explain ambiguity in a given sentence. Again, you must know the meaning of the term ambiguity for you to get these marks. Normally, it, uh, normally uh, the question can be one mark or two marks, so you must make sure that you box the two marks or the one marks the one mark or the two marks. So the woman beat her daughter because she was drunk. So this is an ambiguous sentence. And uh, in this sentence, uh, this, one, this one is an ambiguous sentence, and so you have to give the two possible meanings of the sentence. So what is the first meaning of this sentence? So the first meaning of the sentence is the woman drunk beat her daughter. So drunk here is giving us more information about the woman. So we have a woman here, and then we have the daughter of this woman. So the woman beat her daughter because she was drunk. So we have she here that makes the uh, that brings the confusion or rather makes the sentence to be ambiguous the personal pronoun she is the one that is making the sentence the woman beat her daughter because she was drunk it is this uh, the, the she which is a personal pronoun is the one that brings ambiguity in the sentence so what is the first meaning of the sentence the woman beat her daughter because she was drunk so the first mean the first meaning it is that it's the woman who was drunk and probably because of being drunk the woman started just beating the daughter uh, with no reason probably so the woman beat her daughter because she was drunk it's the woman who was drunk and so this woman beats the daughter and then the second meaning it's the daughter who is drunk and so the woman beats the daughter because the daughter is the one who is drunk so the first meaning it is the woman who is drunk if you read the sentence the woman beat her daughter because she was drunk refer back to the woman it is the woman who is drunk and then the second meaning the woman beat her daughter because she was drunk it's the daughter now who is drunk and that probably uh, irritated the mother and so the woman beat the daughter. So those are the two possible meaning of that statement. Okay, so our third objective of the lesson was that you are supposed to attempt an exercise given so I have two sentences here and I want to see now if you can get the meaning of the possible two meanings of these questions. So uh, once more, uh, this is KUTV, Elimu Live, Kenya's premier educational TV 
keep on watching. So uh, I have messages here. I have some messages here. Someone says, uh, hello, Mwalimu. Uh, I've received your message. Someone says, hello, Mwalimu. And then there's another one who says, watching you and enjoying your teachings. Thank you, and I hope you are understanding. And anytime you come across any question that asks about ambiguity in sentences, you'll be able to answer. Then someone says, kudos, Madam Majun, watching you live KUTV. Kisumu with my high school teens. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. And remember, this is KUTV Elimu Live, the Kenya's premier educational TV. So the first question here, explain the ambiguity in the following sentences. So this is the exercise. Our third objective was you attempt the exercise given. So explain the ambiguity in the following sentences. Explain the ambiguity. Explain the ambiguity in the following. Explain the ambiguity in the following sentences. The first question, the first sentence I mean, Valentine spent all the money he had set aside for emergency. Valentine spent all the money he had set aside for emergency. Then the second sentence, he narrated to him his success story. So there are three questions. The first one, Valentine spent all the money he had set aside for emergency. The second question, he narrated to him his success story. And the third sentence, the chicken is ready to eat. So here we have three sentences. Here we have three sentences. Valentine spent all the money he had set aside for emergency. He narrated to him his success story. The chicken is ready to eat. So as you try getting the two different meanings of those three sentences, there's another question under ambiguity that was tested in 2020. So in 2020, there was a question in ambi on ambiguity and the question read, explain two different meanings of the following sentence. Explain two different meanings of the following sentence. So the sentence was, uh, the sentence was, they are flying. They are flying planes. They are flying planes. They are flying planes. So they are flying planes. We have the personal pronoun here, they, that is bringing about the ambiguity in this sentence. We have the personal pronoun, they, that is bringing the ambiguity in this, um, in this sentence. They are flying planes. So I want us to look at they as the people who fly planes. So are the people who fly planes? They are pilots. So pilots are the ones who fly planes. So the first meaning of this sentence, you'll say pilots, you replace they, which is a personal pronoun now, with a noun. And so you replace it with the noun pilot. Pilots, because it's they, it's in plural. So the subject or the noun itself must be, uh, must also be plural. So pilots are flying, 
are flying planes. Pilots are flying planes. So the pilots are at that act of making the planes to be on motion. So that is the first meaning of that statement. That is the first meaning of that statement. Pilots are flying planes. So they is a personal pronoun, so we replace it with a noun, pilots, to bring or rather to remove ambiguity in the sentence. And so in this case, we focus specifically to the people who are flying planes. So we say pilots are flying planes. The sentence is no longer ambiguous, and like if you say they are flying planes. So the second meaning of this sentence, they are flying, uh, they are flying planes. So we have the planes, and then the planes are designed to fly. So the second meaning, the planes are designed to fly. The planes are designed to fly. So in this case, they here will not be referring to pilots, but rather will be referring to the plane so they here will be referring to the uh, they will be referring to the planes and these planes are specifically designed to fly and so in this case we will say that that is uh, uh, the planes are designed to fly so those are the two possible meanings of uh, the sentence they are they are flying planes so the first one the pilots are flying planes. And the second one, the planes are designed to fly. OK, uh, someone here has texted me here and is saying, hey, teacher, though I'm late before the lesson, but the lesson is good. Thank you. And uh, you can still follow up from uh, our YouTube and other social media handles. Again, remember, you're watching KUTV Elimu Live, the Kenya's premier educational television. Another one says, thank you. Um, <laughs> OK, sorry. So this one has texted in Swahili, a question in Swahili, that one. Uh, that one I won't read. So um, back to our questions. The last objective was attempt and exercise given. I given I've given you three. Uh, questions. Valentine spent all the money he had set aside for emergency. He narrated to him his success story and the chicken is ready to eat. So I believe you now know the, you've now, uh, you now can tell the two meanings of the sentence. Valentine spent all the money he had set aside for emergency. So here we have Valentine. From your answer, I believe you have someone known as Valentine. So we have the subject Valentine who had money and then he used he had set aside some money so he had saved some money and he just got an emergency and so he decided to use this money that he had set aside for this specific emergency and then valentine the second meaning is that you have someone who, who is called valentine and this Valentine had some money that he had set aside for emergency. And because of one or two reasons, he ended up spending the money that was supposed to be for emergency. So the first meaning, Valentine is using the money that he had put specifically. He had, he had saved this money uh, specifically for emergency. And so he has used that uh, money and then the second one, maybe the, an emergency cropped up, and so Valentine used the money that he had saved. Then he narrated to him his success story. Him again here brings about the ambiguity in this sentence. He narrated to him his success story. So him will refer to the person, the he, now in this sentence with the subject. So he is the one narrating to this listener his own success story and then the other meaning the other possible meaning is that he is narrating to him now the him with the object in this sentence 
the he is narrating to the him his own success story the story that belongs to him and then our third sentence was uh, our third sentence was uh, or is uh, the chicken is ready to eat so we have the chicken that is cooked and so you can enjoy that meal and again we now have the chicken the bird now and the birds are ready to eat so in this case it's the bird which is the chicken that is ready maybe they were caged somewhere up to they were supposed to be caged maybe for one hour at a certain place and so once they leave that place they're supposed to eat so they are ready to eat so we've come to the end of our today's lesson you've come to the end of the English lesson again remember that ambiguity in sentences is tested in English paper 101 stroke 2 that is paper 2 under grammar so anytime you come across a question under ambiguity I'll repeat the examiner can ask you to give the two possible meanings of the sentence or the examiner can ask you to remove ambiguity in the sentence so the meaning of this word ambiguity it is that it's a phenomenon or rather a situation whereby a sentence can be confusing and thereby you are supposed to be clear in your communication just to make sure that the audience or whoever is listening to you gets it clear or rather gets clear what you are saying thank you for watching KU TV Elimu Live the Kenya's premier educational TV ya wahamiaji wakiwa na watoto kutoka nchi za Amerika ya Kati wanaendelea kuwasili kwenye mpaka kati ya Marekani na Mexico. But folks, I'm going. Thank you very very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Ni habari kutoka pembe zote duniani. Pepo pasi kukufuku. Pepo pa ni idea. Sazidi ananyonya, hanyonyi vizuri, anakuwa hayuko comfortable. Jeshi la Jamhuri ya Kidemokrasia ya Kongo linapambana na uasi wa ADF. Maisha yake amelelewa kama mtoto wa kike. Um levy blessing but basically people have known me before by the name Beatrice. Akifahamika kwa jina Beatrice, baba yake mzazi akamtoroka kwa kukosa kuelewa alikuwa mtoto wa jinsi ya gani. Um usually told that you know my father you know separated with mom after you know realizing that I'm an intersex ila sasa anafahamika kama levy blessing na anamke now at least my my certificate and uh, my id is now at least they can lead the name levy fahamu jinsi levy blessing alikabiliana na pandashuka za utata wa jinsia na midorothi musyoka alhamisi hii hapa runinga ya KU
Are you an aspiring media practitioner, a graduate, or you just want to advance your skills in television production? Then welcome to Kenyatta University, where education meets innovation. KUTV, the premier university television station in Kenya, is now offering short courses in TV.